I know that ain't who I think it is. I know there he is. <laughs> what? <What's up? laughs> now that's who you think it is. How you guys doing? Coach, good. Coach what? Good. I'm Coach doing good. Right How are you? I am. Uh, this is weird. I double booked tonight. I, I didn't know, and I'm not great with my schedule. So uh, we're celebrating my daughter's uh, sixth birthday at a restaurant, and uh, I just had to push back the reservations back a little bit so I could join you guys. So I'm happy to be here and excited to uh, to be on with you. Oh, tell your daughter we said thank you, because I don't know if I would be that forgiving toward my father, but I'm happy you're doing it for us. <laughs> uh, no, absolutely. I I'm happy to be here. She understands. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity to chat with y'all. How y'all doing? Uh, doing well. You want to give your daughter a quick shout out for Great. You push stuff around? No doubt. Naomi Spencer Blakeney. She's the best. Uh, it's kind of cool because she just started the Aww. last two days, um, Wednesday and Tuesday. She just started saying like, hey, dad, can we go to the court and shoot some baskets? So um, I, I'm, you know, it's, it, the, the hoops thing is in her blood, I guess. It's uh, she's getting a little bit acclimated to it. So kind of cool. You putting you putting Ty Grace, head coach Ty Grace, on tour already? Absolutely. Be on the list of <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. How's the Super Bowl and all the festivities surrounding it? Uh, beautiful. When you're not working, I bet you anyone that came down here as a tourist, I bet you they're living the time of their lives. They had a gospel concert. I hear Kodak is in the in the state. A lot of famous people. I didn't ran into so many you know, internet celebrities. I'm like, man, this is wonderful. NFL legends, Donovan McNabb, Mike Vick, they're all in the building rooting for Jalen Hurts, I assume. But Absolutely. when you work, when you work, in, uh, this is no sleep. This, <laughs> this is the, you sleep, this is the, this is the uh, sleep when you dead week. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Yes. Well, now that we've got Coach on, we got a few people on. Welcome to HBCU Period, where we talk about everything HBCU Period. We're so excited to be joined by Coach Blakeney, a DC native, played for Coach K at Duke, won two national championships. He's coached at several D1 universities, and he's now the head coach at Howard, making waves to the program. The program is doing so many great things, including my favorite thing, which is what we're going to start on, the Social Justice Initiative. You guys have been advocating for Black maternal health, and I've been so lucky enough to talk to you about it. But what does that mean to you to be advocating for something well, that is every so year big? since I've been at Howard, we've had a social justice initiative. And uh, when we had our beginning of the season meeting, we put a challenge out to our guys uh, to talk about that initiative and what those guys wanted to do. Um, I clearly left it up to them because it's really important for. I wanted them to take ownership of the initiative. Uh, they came back several days later and said, black maternal health. And uh, quite honestly, I got terrified. <laughs> I was scared um, because I wasn't well versed in that area. It wasn't something that I had you know, read a whole lot about or knew about. And uh, so it was one of those things where I thought everyone on our, our team and in our program needed to get up to speed and educated on. Uh, but I was so proud of them, and uh, they put the work in. They went down to the Black Congressional Caucus and spent time there. Um, had Dr. Fatima uh, Goss Graves come in and uh, do some presentations, and they've done some research on their own. So that was really dope for them to do. And I, I know a lot of them are on here. I see them checking in, and uh, fellas, what's up? Super proud of you guys. And, uh, you know. It's been great. We, we did a day of service here in Washington, D.C. with Mama Tomo Village uh, that we've sort of uh, adopted and we're staying in touch with. And uh, on February 21st, we're going to do uh, something on campus uh, with Birthing Justice, a documentary uh, to bring awareness and, do, uh, and include our campus community as well with some of the things that we've done. So really uh, love what our guys in our program have done and excited about it. Uh, coach, for you, you know, you talked about each player did their own research. You did yours as well. Uh, learning about Black maternal health, what is one thing that was very striking for you that you did not know prior to your research? Well, I think there was a lot of things that were striking. Uh, if you look at the national average of Black women having complications or 
uh, morbidity from, uh, from pregnancy, it's three times as many uh, black women in, in our country than, than other races. If you look at here in Washington, D.C., it's four times. Um, when you kind of take a look at the bigger scope, this is something for the last probably 70 years that has been increasing uh, in certain areas uh, that we've never paid attention to. We spend more money on health care than any of the 13 developed countries that are, you know, your first class com com uh, countries. And for black women to experience a increase uh, and this issue to be something that we're discussing now is certainly unfair and unjust. Um, there's certain boxes that we can check. And if we are, you know, like Mama Tomo Village, they have, you know, their record of helping black women uh, pre-pregnancy, during pregnancy and post-pregnancy uh, with the tools and the instructions and information that they have gives our black women a greater chance at, at successful pregnancies. You have brought in your players, you know, ranges from students to student athletes to advocates. You know, how important is it to you, since this has been something that you've done since you've gotten it, to teach them well, how to amplify their voices? Our campus was built on social justice. Um, you know, and it's really important that we understand our legacy and our history and our culture. Um, we have an opportunity being here in Washington, D.C. to do and bring greater change, not only to our campus community, not only to our city, but if we can lean on on conversations that are nationally and affect change, those are things that, uh, you know, I want our players involved with. When they're here, this is part of their educational experience. And we talk about the classroom being part of uh, you know, our basketball uh, court being part of their educational experience. It's a classroom. So, you know, typically a lot of times we start out by reading some type of uh, either quote or poem or, or discussion on something that may be taking place. Uh, and that's really important. So, you know, there's a, a lot of growth that can be learned with the life lessons on the basketball court, but it also can be a classroom to benefit their growth and development as well. Coach, uh, this season you have maternal health. Last year during midterms, you guys were vote, uh, encouraging others to vote. You know, when you're recruiting these guys to come into your program, what type of guy are you looking for? And how do you kind of sell them on this is where the activism component of being a part of this program, not just the X's and O's? Oh, great question. Our, our program's not for everybody. And uh, we talk about that. And when we're presenting... Uh, our program and our university to young men. These are all things that are part of our presentation. So you can tell right away if that's something that, you know, someone wants to do. We had uh, Elijah Hawkins, who is our starting point guard, uh, you know, intern on, at, uh, on Capitol Hill last summer. We had other players that are just involved in ways, I think, you know, with uh, trying to position themselves for opportunities after they're done playing for the next 40 to 50 years uh, that it's meaningful to them. So, you know, we, we, we research um, internships. We have people that are helping us uh, that we've developed great relationships with here in Washington, D.C. and other places um, with, you know, Capitol Hill being two or three miles away from our campus, the White House, uh, the, the federal government, the D.C. government. There are so many opportunities, I think, for our young men, especially uh, and also Embassy Row for some of our international students. You know, we need to take advantage of those things. So that's part of the presentation when we're talking to our young men about uh, being part of our program. I'm surprised you didn't mention Howard alumna, Madam Vice President. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's been great. Uh, we had a chance to take couple of our guys, uh, Steve Settle III, um, Elijah Hawkins, Shaheem, uh, Odom, and myself all went down, and, and Jelani Williams, excuse me, uh, we all went down to uh, a little event that she had at, at the White House and uh, had a chance to spend some time there and hear a lot of the things that they're implementing, a lot of things that they're thinking about, and to give some input on some conversations that are meaningful and powerful. So to be able to do things like that, uh, you know, at Howard where 
you know, those things have been done by so many people before. So we stand on the shoulders of giants of those people. Uh, it's pretty neat. Coaches are, you know, responsible for teaching their guys things while they're with them home, you know, on the court and off the court. But as you have gone through this and you have watched your guys, what is something that they have taught you? Uh, a lot, a lot. I, I think – I think I've uh, grown a lot over these last three or four years uh, as a coach, and it's been directly attributed to them, but also it's been attributed to our, our 63 managers as well. Um, the majority of our managerial staff is female, and to spend so much time around female, I have a wife, I have a daughter, um, it's, it's been for me a wonderful learning experience, uh, the compassion uh, understanding, um, patience, um, just looking at, I th think, you know, I'm 51 and, and our young people are certainly a, another generation, um, understanding them and where they're coming from in their generation and just trying to listen as much as I can. Um, those things have been a great learning experience for me. You have a daughter, you know, as she gets older, how do you hope that, you know, the landscape of the world, and especially as we talk about, you know, maternal health, because that isn't just about, you know, having kids and babies. I mean, there's so many things that fall under that. So how do you hope that the landscape changes well, for her? I think she's while she's young, we've been trying to expose her to everything. Um, she was at our day of service. She came to the dinner and met uh, Martin Luther King III. Um, she comes to our game. She's on campus all the time. If you, if she didn't know any better, she would think that she's a student at Howard. Um, so for her to have that, that kind of exposure, and I, I didn't have that. Um, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people aren't as, as you know, have the resources to have the, that kind of exposure. Um, but our world has so much information with these little things that we hold in our hands, right? And if people are curious and interested in learning more, um, you know, Google certainly is something that can uh, be a great tool. Um, just understanding what they're watching, understanding that all information may not be the right information, but you can look up those things. You can have an opportunity to, to try to better yourselves um, with some of those technology devices that we have today. Um, you know, when I went to college, I had a typewriter. So <laughs> um, it, it wasn't as, as convenient as uh, the technology that our young people have today. Mm -hmm. Coach, you mentioned your experience in college. You went, then go to an HBCU. It's okay. Not one, either. not one recruited me. Oh, hold on. See, we, <laughs> See, we, we actually talked about that yeah. last week with Coach yeah. Mo Williams. Uh, he said yeah. the same but thing. Actually, I'm going to switch my question up along those lines. You know, you were top player in the country. No HBCU recruited you, but as soon as you kind of got to Howard, that was you did the opposite you were going after some of these high profile recruits uh can you talk about your experience being a pro a top recruit no one really no hbcu is recruiting you and how your model has kind of changed now being a hbcu coach in this generation yeah sure i i grew up probably two miles away from howard right up georgia avenue um i can walk to howard i was basically on howard's campus so much growing up because I was a baseball player and uh, one of my mentors was the head coach at Howard named uh, Chuck Hinton. So Howard used to practice their baseball over at Banneker Field and uh, spending a lot of time over there getting to know um, their, their team and understand what Howard is, what was about. Um, you know, it, it just wasn't, I guess, in the cards. But one of the things I got to learn working at Harvard was that Parents and students value great education. And no matter what that brand may say, if it has an incredible reputation of developing young people, educating young people, producing young people to become uh, awesome individuals in the community, um, parents are willing to listen. And Howard has that brand and that uh, cachet that, you know, parents are willing to look and, and, and listen to. So when we reach out to people and we say we're from Howard, 
um, they are saying, yeah, we definitely would like to hear what you guys have to say. We haven't had many people that they're saying they're not interested. Even at the end of the day, they may say no, but they still want to kick the tires around a little bit to understand more about the university and our program. You're looking at things from a coach's lens um, now, but, you know, once upon a time, you were a player. So what kind of are you learning now, maybe, that you didn't learn, you know, during your college matriculation? Or how is the experience different? Well, how are I you think, like, now? for me, this is a little bit of a grad education for me. Um, I've, since being a coach, I've always tried to be a part of the campus community. Um, earlier in the week, I went to a, you know, a great uh, speech that CNN did where they brought back um, three alums from Howard and Wolf Blitzer was the moderator. But these three alums are very prominent on air, two are on air people and, and one was a behind the scenes person in their sports division. Um, so to be included or have a chance to use our resources on campus to continue to try to learn as much as I can um, those things really mean a lot to me. So to have all the resources on campus um, when speakers come, if it's, you know, VP Harris or if it's Andrew Young or whoever those people may be on campus when they, when they get there, um, I want to take advantage of those opportunities to hear what, what they're saying, hear what they're thinking about, maybe things that are going on in the world that I may want to have a better understanding with. So for me, being on college campuses and especially at Howard, it's, it's, it's part of my graduate education, even though I've never gone to grad school. I'm happy you mentioned graduate. Let's talk a little bit about that undergrad, you know, head coach of Howard. But you have the opportunity to learn under some pretty big coaching legends, both that are retiring now. Let's first off, Coach K and also Coach Bray, who just announced his retirement from Notre Dame. So what are some of the lessons you've learned, especially under Coach K, seeing how he ran pretty much a perennial empire at Duke? You won two national titles. He has several more. What are some lessons you learned under him at a PWI that you are kind of maybe putting your spin on so that you can develop the same culture at HBCU? That's a great question. And it, it's very, um, it's always resonating in my head because um, as great as Coach K is, I have to understand I'm not Coach K. Yeah. And I think some of the probably, you know, assisting coaches and players that played under Coach K have to get to the point where they uh, understand that they're not Coach K. And, and that's probably the biggest, you know, I think takeaway that I could, could have. Um, you know, other things with that is that he's an incredible communicator. Um, he's an incredible incredible motivator. He is very much a leader, a CEO. Um, he has an intuition about people that I think is a gift and unique. Um, he is very planned and organized. Uh, and, and his attention to detail with things is, uh, you know, outstanding. Um, and he's, he's competitive as hell. You know, even in this last year, you know, he was probably just as hungry to win as he was, you know, in his first years. So, um, you know, I, there's, a, there's tons of things that I take away from him. Uh, he's a great – people don't know this, but if Coach K wanted to be, like, the best branding, marketing guy in the country, he probably could. Um, he has – if you look at Duke basketball and look at that brand, that's all Coach K. Like – from Cameron Indoor Stadium, the renovations of it, the practice gym, the offices, the uniforms, every touch of that uh, program has, has been part of his fingerprints. And to see that is, uh, is pretty phenomenal. I think the guy can do any and everything he sets his mind to. So um, I'm just a huge fan and very fortunate and lucky that I had a chance to spend some time in his classroom. Yeah, as a Duke alum, you know, Coach K retired, Coach Roy also retired. I know you still root for your alma mater occasionally. How does it feel seeing that rivalry under two different head coaches now? It's still the same. We don't like them on game day, and they don't like us on game day. So that hasn't changed. It's like Michigan, Michigan State, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, 
the campuses are so close and the communities are so small that you're bumping into those guys at the mall, the barber shop, you know, at parties and different things like that. Um, so there's relationships there. And now with the way AAU is and, um, you know, has, how basketball has kind of made it a little bit of six degrees of separation from everybody, especially with uh, social media, um, you know, everyone knows everybody. So it's not like you go there hating, you know, your opponent, but once it's time to tip up, you, you, you don't like that, you know, funny color blue that they wear. Um, and it's, it's, it's something that you, you know, it's real, it's real. And uh, you go around Durham, you go around Chapel Hill in different areas in North Carolina, you see the Duke flags, you see the Carolina flags. And uh, it's more serious for our fans uh, 365 days a year than it is for us where it can be you know, anywhere between two and four days. What Coach K has done is, you know, like Mia said, created this powerhouse, but he's also created uh, exceptional individuals that, you know, have been successful on the court, you know, going professionally or who have, you know, gone into other ventures. When you look at that, you look at your own players and what you're cultivating at Howard, what do you hope to do to make sure that you can create the next generation of, you know, the guys that. Well, it's, it's really like important. Uh, when I'm looking at those young men, I'm looking at myself. Um, and, and I came from a single parent household. Uh, my mom worked at a grocery store. She was a grocery clerk. Um, you know, I, I grew up in, the, in, in that neighborhood. Right. And to ha have a chance to use, sports and, and education to try to, you know, take myself out of that environment or take myself out of that situation and now have an opportunity to mentor and help young men grow and develop is, it means everything to me. And I don't take that for granted. Um, I, I love our, I, I love our team um, and I love our guys. And it's really important that, um, you know, they won't, all of them won't get the message now, but as much as I can continue to stay on message and continue to let them know that I love them and that these things and opportunities and resources are very beneficial for them, um, I, I think at some point it will resonate. At some point, you know, they'll, they'll start to understand it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a process, right? And there's young men in our program that, you know, when they get here as freshmen, they're a lot different as sophomores than they were a freshman. Um, so that growth and development is part of, are part of that as well. And as uh, long as they're getting that part and uh, understanding that, you know, they have to continue to try to evolve, we're, we're winning. Yeah. You know, last season, 16, 12, one of your best seasons as head coach. This year on – similar pace, six game winning streak. How can you see, you know, you talk about your love and your care for your team. How can you see that kind of translate onto the floor, you know, that development as well? Well, I think that there's a connectiveness that's there, um, you know, and that's that, that, that language, that term is really big in our program. Um, can we be connected? You know, how many, we call them daps, high fives, low fives, whatever they're called today, handshakes. Um, how many of those can we do a day, right? How many of those can we do in the game? Um, how much can we communicate with one another? If we're huddling, are our huddles tight, which means that our players are all hugging each other and they're close in there. And, you know, there's the communication about what needs to be done or what just happened and how can we improve that? Um, we do a rope tension uh, situation every day where we have a, a rope and our guys line up in a circle and we talk about, you know, is it, if it's a poem, if it's a quote, whatever those things are before and after practice. Um, so everything we do is about bringing our guys together and keeping our circle tight. How do you build a culture like it's that? It's really hard. Um, and, and honestly, I, I did not – I played in two places in high school and college that the culture was already established. And uh, uh, so it was one of those things as a younger player, joining a culture, you just kind of fall in and, and pay attention to the older guys and watch and do what they do and kind of like laugh, cry, repeat. 
um, you know, as as a coach and you're a new head coach and you're trying to establish a culture, um, I, I just thought that's what everybody did. You know, I thought that was already understood and, and it's not. Um, you know, part of our, our, our think that helped us really speed up the process with our culture, we brought in Dr. Joe Carr. Um, Dr. Carr is a DC native. He has worked with so many professional athletes, collegiate athletes, um, Fortune 500 companies. And uh, he was somebody that can help me, I think, translate my ideas and my thoughts in a situation uh, and be able to uh, articulate them or have them on paper and uh, be able to translate them to our team. So that, that's been a huge help as well. The village isn't built by one person, you know? So we've, uh, we take input from all. Speaking of a village, you know, a few, a few games ago, sorry, I don't remember the correct day, but the Black Duke alums came to, you know, support you and to watch your games. You know, how did that make you feel to, to look out in that crowd and see, how dope you is know, that, right? supporting you? Um, no, really. And I get like emotional and chilled up about it because at the end of the day, we had 160, 170 Black Duke alums, right? And at a school that's 7,500 students or whatever the population is right now, the Black population of those schools are probably two to three, maybe 4%. So to understand that we had 160 to 170 Black Duke alums at our game, uh, embracing Howard University, embracing the culture, and supporting our program, wow. I mean, that's unbelievable. I, 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 Duke has probably never had 170 Black alums at their game, you know? So that's, uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. Well, the alumni that came to the game, hopefully they saw one of the six wins you have in conference this year, currently tied for first with uh, Maryland Eastern Shores coach. You know, you've been in the, you've been in the MEAC for four seasons. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, the parity in the MEAC and how hard it is to win this conference? Yeah, it, it's a very undervalued conference. And uh, every, con every time I have an opportunity to pump up you know, Coach Rob Jones at Norfolk State, Lavelle Moten at Central, Kevin Brodus at, you know, Morgan, Jason Crafton at Maryland Eastern Shore, Juan Dixon at Cop, and any of our guys, Stan Waterman now at Dell State. Um, anytime I have an opportunity to, to pump those guys up, I do, because I think our, our league is, uh, is really good. And from top to bottom, if you don't come to play night in and night out, you can take an L. Um, you know, when you look at kind of the, the conferences and their rankings, we're, I think, at the 28th best conference in the country. Um, so there's, you know, it, it, and I think in a way, if, you know, our conferences and our schools, we have to play some buy games, which means that we have to play some power five games to, um, you know, help with revenue uh, for our athletic department. And uh, with that, it, it, it brings in some challenges with some games. Uh, we opened up against Kentucky this year, but with that, we were able to raise money and bring money back to the university. Um, all of our schools have to do it. Some have to do it more than others, just depending on their budgets and their funding. So when the rankings with our universe, uh, with our conference, when, that, when those come out, you know, some of those games that we are not successful uh, with ends up hurting our chances for moving up in our conference. But I think, you know, we've done such a good job in non-conference and uh, again, in, in our conference that our conference has jumped up a lot. So a lot of parity, uh, a lot of competition, a lot of really good coaches. And, uh, you know, I, I think anytime that, you know, people have a chance to either attend one of our games or view one of our games on TV, it's a, it's a great product. Talk about how, you know, tough this conference is to win. And now that, you know, you're riding high, everybody's going to want to take a crack at you guys and everybody's going to play their best ball. So what's your message to your team? Well, it's you know, one of the things the I work? told them today is, you know, having a chance to play at Duke and we went for one year. Uh, we started number one and we ended the season at number one. We were never not number one. 
um, you're going to get everybody's game, best game. You're going to get everybody's best challenge. doesn't matter the record. doesn't matter the opponent. Everybody has you circled on their calendar. So um, that means in terms of our preparation, we have to, you know, be prepared and we have to pay attention to detail. We have to give the effort that we need to give night in and night out. So we're prepared to uh, take everybody's best, you know, best shot. So um, it, it's, it's one of those things where for us, you know, we don't have, um, we don't have the, the history and the tradition to see, you know, from previous years, what's, what's that, what's that, what's that about, you know, we're building this right now. So it's a learning curve for our guys and uh, you know, just, they have to continue to embrace uh, the challenge. And, you know, every day we practice at 7 AM show up and be ready to go. Do you have any games circled coming up that, you know, you're excited for or that, you know, Annie is extra? Any any games? I think me and Mia got one that we're looking at. Like, mm -hmm. can't wait to see that. We can't wait to see you guys match up against uh, Norfolk again. We've talked about that. And we actually had Coach on here about two, two three weeks ago. Um, he's excited. Yeah, our, our, next game, <laughs> our next game is our, our most important game. We're, we're – Excited and thrilled that we have an opportunity to play Delaware State on Saturday at their place at 4 p.m. Um, and we haven't looked past them at all. That's that's on our calendar. That's our next game up. And, you know, they've won five of six games uh, and they're very dangerous at home. So if we don't go in and give our best effort, um, it can be a challenging night. You know, as conference play starts to wind down a little bit, only a handful of games before the tournament. What are you really emphasizing to your team over these next couple of games, you know, maybe to expedite that learning curve a little bit, get them ready for the MEAC tournament? Well, for me, it's, the, it's, it's, it's like three things. It's the details. It's physically can we continue to push ourselves uh, to continue to have an edge? And then mentally, can we mentally challenge ourselves to concentrate the way we need to concentrate or um, – you know, communicate the way we need to communicate. So, so those are the things that, you know, I look at with our guys. Like, how well are we paying attention to detail? Are we pushing ourselves physically and then mentally? Are we making tons of mental errors? Are our mental errors um, not as high as, you know, that gives us an opportunity to be ready and I think successful in our, in our games? than yourself who on the team do you think embodies that leadership role that can you know help you I, I think players? all of our guys have joined and uh and stepped up that was one of the things for us that I thought was a big turning point in the season is that they took ownership of the team um and, and I took a back seat you know I didn't have to hold them accountable I didn't have to hold them responsible I didn't have to be a cheerleader I didn't have to coach effort I could just kind of coach and uh that was the thing that I was really waiting on and, and wanting to see, like, when will one of my teams step up and, and take uh, ownership? And, and this group has done it in a way that uh, I, I asked them, you know, what do you think we should do during timeouts? What plays do we run? How should we defend this uh, in walkthroughs? And, you know, they go out and execute the game plan. So, you know, kudos to them. They've done an unbelievable job. And uh, our staff, you know, I, I think we have a terrific staff. Um, and, it, to, you know, all the things that they do, um, you know, we, we have to it, – it's, it's just great that I think this group is all connected and all on the same page with moving towards one, you know, one collective goal. Uh, you talk about the leadership, but one thing I've seen in some of those closer games, you had a close game against Norfolk, another one against North Carolina Central, very tight games, and you, that's where the leadership kind of shined the most to me. You guys were able to buckle down on defense, get the stops where you needed to get the stops. How do you hope to, like, continue that, especially in those tight games, especially as – season winds down, teams are getting better, teams are clicking at different times. How do you, like, continually enforce that leadership and doing what you need to do, especially down the stretch? Yeah, it's a connectivity. It's our – it's our, our guys really like each other. 
Um, they hang out off the court. They hang out when, you know, we walk into practice there, you know, sitting around chit-chatting or at a basket, you know, doing things. Like, it's a group of guys that are, one, great guys from top to bottom. And two, they are, uh, they're friends. So it's, it's easy to, uh, to go into a, a competition knowing that your brother has your back. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it, I can trust this guy that, because I know he's going to be here. I, I can trust him because he's going to be in help side. I can trust him because I can throw this ball and I know he's going he's gonna to catch it. Um, you know, I can run this play because I trust him. So with that trust amongst them and I think that uh, connectivity, it's, uh, you know, those things have really helped us in those type of situations. Can you talk about taking it one game at a time? You have a game on Saturday. As you look forward to it, you know, what are some key points? Of well, I mean, Delaware guys? State went in five out of six, um, you know, and I'm so happy for Stan Waterman and uh, the job that he's doing at Delaware State. Um, you know, I think we'll, we'll probably see a lot of zone. Um, they're a really good zone team. Um, their gymnasium on their campus is a very challenging place to play. Um, I'm pretty sure they'll have a very uh, packed house. And uh, for us, that's good. Like, you know, it's, it's great to be able to play in those kind of atmospheres and those kind of games uh, to see where, you are, where you're at and to measure yourself against a team that's playing as good as any team in our league right now. So um, – I don't know if there's any key points. You know, for us, we have to defend. Um, we haven't played in 11 days, so we're, we're, this game is going to be on Saturday. So um, I, I don't know our sharpness, how that's going to, how that's going to be. But the one thing, like football, that carries from, you know, road game to road game is defense. And uh, if we can get out and defend and make and get stops, I think that we'll have a, you know. We'll, we'll have an opportunity to, to play well. And, Coach, wrapping it up, 14 wins already, still plenty of games left. Need three, about three more games for you to tie your career high of 16 wins from last season. Can you just speak about your growth as a head coach? You know, first, this is your first program, and continue gradually seeing that growth handful of wins this season, a couple more the next season. Last year, breakout year, 16. This year, you're on pace to even surpass that. Yeah. I, I think, you know, a, a lot of it, honestly, is just attributed to our players. Um, they've been awesome. I, I don't make one shot. I don't make one pass. I don't get one rebound. And, uh, you know, if I did, my Achilles or my knee probably would break or tear. So, uh, I, I just, like I said, I love our guys. They do an unbelievable job, and they've, uh, they've made me look a lot better than probably I deserve. Um, but it, it's, they're, they're great, and they're awesome. And, you know, we're on pace as a, as a group to, you know, make a little history. Um, we haven't had two consecutive winning seasons, uh, I don't think, since 1986-87. Um, so, you know, to be able to do that, and I don't know the math on that, but it, it's been a long time. Uh, so, you know, to have a, a winning series season at Howard period is, is really special and really a, a great accomplishment because there's only been three since 1992. So, um, you know, and, and then one of the things that we've looked at last year here in the Washington, D.C. area, we had the best winning percentage out of any university, Division One university in the DMV with, you know, Georgetown, Maryland, Howard, American, George Washington. And, uh, you know, we'll be right in the conversation again to potentially, if we can continue to play well and take care of our business, to have that, uh, that as well again this year. And I don't know when and if that's ever happened with back-to-back -back years at Howard. Okay, I'm seeing the shift. Howard football, for like that winning season, a piece of the MEAC title. Didn't get the Celebration Bowl bid, but got a piece of that title. Howard basketball vying for their second consecutive winning season. Seems to be a nice little shift over there. Well, How we're going to be known as a sports school pretty soon? I think we'll always be known as an academic school, and I wouldn't want that to change. Um, I think our athletic director, Carrie Davis, has done an incredible job of identifying 
um, leaders that can, I think, elevate and, you know, educate our student athletes in a way that uh, gives us the best chance to, to do some of those things you talked about. And uh, without his intuition and insight on uh, getting the right people in the right places that, you know, a lot of the credit and all the credit goes to him and our president, Dr. Frederick. So we're just lucky to have some incredible leaders uh, in our president, Dr. Frederick and uh, Mr. Kerry Davis. I just want to give a quick shout out to Daniel Marks. Daniel, all your hard work is not going unnoticed. You're great. You're amazing. And we truly appreciate you. I appreciate you. And I just wanted to give him a shout out. No I doubt. Dan in is amazing. He's uh, our chief program strategist first year at Howard. And uh, the job that he's done and uh, I think galvanizing a lot of the things we do off the court is, uh, has been awesome. And uh, we're very lucky to have him. Uh, and then, like I mentioned before, our managers, uh, we have 63 of them, mostly females, and they are the best managerial group in the country. Um, so that, that's real. Give a shout out to my man, Tyler Thornton, who's on, uh, one of our assistants that is my right hand. He's awesome and will be a terrific head coach one day. I don't know if Coach Bolanis and uh, Coach Steve Ongley's on, but want to give my staff a shout out as well. So, oh, damn. I didn't even mean to. Oh. I didn't even mean to jump in here. Yes, you did. How What's you guys up, boy? doing? Hey, Jelani. <laughs> how you guys no. doing? Hey, you want to say hi to everyone? Uh, yeah. Good. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, a nice, fun conversation with your coach. You What's see up, how coach? much he loves you. You see, you see him getting all lovey dovey ahead of Valentine's yeah. Day. <laughs> he's he's, yeah, he's blushing a little bit over there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Normally we plan these surprises and me and me are all on board with you. <laughs> I was like, hey, hey there, okay. You're going to pop up. We're going to have some fun with you. Probably and, only one or two questions because I'm pretty sure Naomi wants her father back for dinner. No doubt. And just so you guys know, Jelani has yeah. been so instrumental on our Black Maternal Health Project and uh, has been a little bit of the face of that. Um, for us and uh, so proud of all the things that he's done with our program. He's only been here a year, but he's been uh, and made such an impact, I think, not only on the court, but also on campus in the community. So definitely want to shout him out. I'm about to start blessing. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were talking about, you know, legacies and just leaving, you know, an imprint on things. So Jelani, for you, when it's time for you, you know, hang the shoes up, you know, what type of legacy do you want to leave oh, man. Legacy on it? Is on everything. I think first I want to be known as a, as a leader and a winner on the court. Um, you know, I've always been kind of blessed to be, especially in my college career, um, blessed to be an elder on the team. So being able to lead guys and bring guys together um, and also win, be a part of, you know, winning culture and something that, you know, continues to, to move on from there in my time in high school here in the DMV and then at Penn, um, and now hopefully a Howard, you know, trying to establish a winning coach here. I think that's the first thing uh, that I want to be remembered for um, on the court. And then off the court, just being a good person, um, caring for the people around me uh, and doing what I can to, you know, help out the people in the community as much as I can, especially those that probably, you know, aren't heard as much as uh, people like myself aren't in the spotlight as much as people like myself. I think that's the biggest thing for me. Okay, Jelani, a little birdie told me you're from Washington, D.C., went to a very popular high school, have some very, <laughs> very influential friends, I might add, you know, <laughs> one of them is one of, still one of our favorite presidents in our lifetime. I was growing up in the DC area, being around that type of, you know, influence and leadership kind of helped you and this team when it comes to activism. Uh, yeah, it's been great. I mean, my time I said, well, friends, um, you know, I kind of really found myself, I was able to, you know, one, get a high level, high level education and learn a lot about, you know, things that go on in the world. But I also gain, you know, critical thinking skills and all that stuff, be able to look at, you know, things that happen in society and kind of look at it for what they are and develop my own opinions about it. And then also just being in, you know, some of those circles, like you talked about, um, you know, understanding how to advocate for myself and others, uh, how to feel like I belong in pretty much any space. And I think that's something that, you know, I carry with me past it. Well, 
um, into my time at Penn and now here at Howard. And I think I try to, you know, do that here, but also hopefully it sets somewhat of an example for, you know, the other guys that we have to be able to, you know, carry themselves the same way and have that same confidence. You've mentioned twice now, you know, kind of taking on a leadership role, being an elder. And I asked Coach earlier, you know, now you guys are, you know, riding high. Everybody's going to want to take a crack at the Bison. So, you know, Coach is a coach, but, you know, for you as a player, as a leader, what are you telling, you know, the guys when you're in huddles, when you're in locker room, when y'all are in the group chat, you know? What's yeah, your I think um, right days? now the biggest thing that I've been trying to give to the guys is the opportunity that we have. I think, you know, Coach was kind of alluding to it earlier in terms of, the history of the university and the basketball program and stuff. But uh, for me, like, you know, we set out at the beginning of the season to win a championship, to win 20 games, to be, you know, to have back-to-back -back winning seasons here. And now we're kind of looking at it in the face. So right now it's like just about understanding, you know, the opportunity that we have and approaching it the right way every day, making sure that we take care of our business um, and, and come in ready to work every day so that, you know, when we get the team's best shot, like Coach was saying about, we, we have fun with that. And we embrace that challenge um, and then, you know, let the cards fall where they may. I think, you know, having matched up with everybody, I like where we are. Um, and I think as long as we can continue to stay consistent um, and continue to play our best games and our best basketball, I think we'll be, you know, in a position to be successful and accomplish our goals. So that's been, you know, my biggest thing right now is just taking advantage of the opportunity. Okay. I think I can't think of a better well. way to end it. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, no, can't think of a better way to end it. Thank you so much for joining us, both of you. Um, we're so excited to see, you know, the great things that you continue to do over the rest of the season on and off the court. Happy birthday oh, to our you. girl Nate Omi. Thank you for letting us borrow your dad. We really uh, appreciate July. that. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> we really appreciate it. Perfect surprise. Is there anything that you guys would like to say? Um, no, you guys like to say just out? appreciate both of you talented, amazing women and uh, Anscape for having us on. This was been this has been great and uh, love uh, love what you guys are doing. Love your work. So uh, keep rocking. Uh, yep, with the comment says follow Howard you. University <laughs> men's basketball on IG and Twitter. Stay up to date on yes. all current games and activism and community events. I follow you guys. You see everything. You don't want to miss anything that has to do with these incredible young men. And on that note, we are going to wrap it yeah. up. Thank you guys for joining us for an episode yeah. of HBCU. Period. Thank we'll you. See you guys Have a great night. Thursday. Thank you guys. Bye.